Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here bringing you another bite size breakdown. This time we're taking a look at Na'Vi versus Team Vitality. This is from the final of the ESL Pro League. It's the first map. Now just for context, this round is obviously an important one for the half. It's the first gun round. Uh, as you can see from Na'Vi's money, they've got absolutely nothing left in the bank. If they lose this one, they will be down to an eco. They're going to be struggling economically for the rest of the half. Um, Vitality, on the other hand, if they lose it, similar sort of situation. They've got enough to cobble together a half by next round, but essentially whoever wins this round is going to be in good shape to kind of dictate the rest of the half economically. So it's an important one to win, um, as with any third round, basically. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that right at the start, this round perfecto has already been tagged down to 32. That is something to notice throughout this round. I want to emphasize kind of how much damage Na'Vi take before they even get to the point of trying to take a site. Now, we're just going to play this out a little bit so we can see the sort of setup. We have a fairly standard default here from Na'Vi. We've got Bit working his way towards B tunnels. Perfecto is actually, if you look, running over to join him now. Uh, so we're going to have two towards B. That's going to be Bit and Perfecto. We're going to have Boomich and Electronic towards sort of top mid doors. And we're going to have Simple looking down through mid with the Scout. Now, as you can see here, Vitality, you're actually, if we just run this back a little bit, Vitality actually leaned four towards A at the start of the round. Um, Misuta was giving Zero and Shocks a boost. That basically means that they can take the two-man short control. They can still have Kyojin holding long. And they basically don't have to leave a gap in the A defense. They basically take a gamble here. They leave the gap. Rather than having a gap in the A defense so that somebody can do that boost, they have a gap in the B defense so that somebody can do that boost. Um, I don't mind the call. I think on the first rifle round, it's not a bad shout to expect Na'Vi to be leaning towards sort of mid and A rather than heading towards those B tunnels. Particularly early in the round, I don't. Th I think it's a reasonable expectation that Na'Vi will not be playing a fast B on their first gun round. So I like that little move from Vitality. It's just a little nuance of the way they did this little short boost that I think is quite important. Now, as you can see, Masuta is now going to start rotating towards B, but what we want to look at... The team Vitality are going to take a calculated risk here and put forward a little bit of aggression on their CT side. Now, with Apex scouting mid and trading damage with Simple, Apex knows that there's not a huge amount of mid presence, particularly him tagging Perfecto on Suicide. I think the information that's been garnered here is that maybe Perfecto's still hanging around near mid, but he's been tagged down, so he's an easy kill. Simple is sat still in spawn, looking down mid with that scope, so there's not a whole lot of mid presence. It's pretty safe to assume. So that's why Vitality, I think, go for this short aggression. I think this was intended out of the gate from the start of the round. However, I think the information that they gather in middle simply reinforces that this is, is potentially a good play. Now, Shox is going to make his initial push dry. Now, again, I think this is based off of the information, potentially. As you can see, Ziwu is set up here at the top of short stairs with a flashbang. Chose not to flash middle. I think that was due to the information that Apex gained. But as you can see, Shox is going to make his way up to the top of mid. And bam, we also saw there, that was a flash thrown from Ziwu. We all saw it pop just above that sort of building that's in the way between Boomich and Shox, and it perfectly blinds Boomich. Shox gets a clean frag and backs out. Now, I like this from Shox as well. He doesn't stick around too long at top mid um, to potentially get crushed by the T's kind of collapsing on him. He doesn't know necessarily how many are set up in long doors outside long at spawn. So he just gets out of dodge. As you can see, Ziwu once again is going to support Shox with some more grenades. He's going to throw that molly into lower so that it's difficult for anyone to come out of lower and try and cause issues for Shox on the retreat. And basically, that's just a really, really nice preset play. Um, I, the reason I say preset is because it was determined from the start of the round. Shox and Ziwu went straight for that boost on top of Masuta. Shox runs straight down short. Ziwu set up at the top of stairs with these grenades ready and rolling. This is something that they've worked on in practice, in previous officials, and it just comes out straight away. It's, you know, someone in spawn has called, right, let's do that short push Ziwu, and they know exactly what to do. Well-oiled, well-organized, well-drilled little bit of map control and a free kill taken by, by Vitality. Now, what I also want to focus on in this round as it plays out a little bit, we're going to see um, 
Vitality split into a fairly standard sort of 2-3 setup. They're not going to leave a huge amount of presence mid. Um, Shox is going to basically sit in CT and be that mid presence. They've got Zewu and Kyojin holding out dedicated towards long. I think the angle here from Vitality is they're expecting just to be a site commit. And they're not expecting a huge amount of presence on mid. I think if an A crunch comes through short and through long the intention is zero and kyojin will fight long hold on to long and then they'll look to retake a if they win that fight at long fairly standard dust two setup but what i like the approach here from navi is they just kind of simplify this round they realize that they've lost somebody they realize that they're at a disadvantage here they've managed to recover the ak that boomich dropped at top mid which is good news so they're still working with two AKs. But I just like this approach from Navi to just simplify the round. Perfecto has just thrown a smoke, which is going to land on Xbox. There you go. It's just popped on Xbox there. You can see it on your screen. And basically, Navi say, screw this. We're going to take away some information from them so they don't know really what's going on at middle. We're just going to group up towards B and we're going to go B. They simplify the round once they've lost somebody. Because at this point, there's too many holes in their default being at a 4v5. They're like, right, let's just group up. Let's just simplify things. Let's see what we can get done. Now, I'll just play this out a little longer. Electronic is going to be the other prong of the attack. He's going to basically act as a lurk through middle. Whilst Perfecto is going to join up with Bit and Simple on B site. Now, as you can see here, Simple is lining up a grenade. Perfecto and Bit are just joined up with him in tunnels. They're all getting their grenades out, all basically getting ready for a B execute. Now, as this smoke goes through from Simple, this is going to land in B doors. And as these flashes start to come out from the rest of the army, Masuta swings dry into the Navi execute. Now, I don't necessarily hate this play from Masuta. I understand the intention is trying to catch Navi while they've got grenades out and, and essentially get in their faces before they can execute. The problem is, is I don't like the fact that he does it with no support. Apex at the back of site does actually have a flashbang. Masuta could call for that flashbang before he peaks tunnels, which would obviously be a lot safer way of doing what he's doing. Essentially, I think Masuta takes an unnecessary risk here. It's a calculated risk. He's gone, oh, they're pulling pins on grenades. They're chucking grenades. There's a good chance I catch somebody with their pants down. On the flip side, there's just no need to do it. They already have the advantage situation being in a 5v4. Apex is there with a flashbang and also a smoke. He could just smoke tunnels and slow this down, or he could throw the flash from Masuta to peak. I think it's just a case where Masuta has acted before he's thought, and he dies for free here. He basically gets nothing done. I guess when I say he gets nothing done, there is one thing to note is that he has taken simple very low. Now, as I was saying throughout the, the round, I want people to pay attention to how low Navi get. They've got three players who are on very, very low HP. So even though Masuta's dry peak has turned this into a 4v4, there is still every single chance that Vitality can win this round because of how low Navi are. So these MP9s and this scout, it, they're not inferior weaponry anymore with the low hp they're on the navi players now we're just going to come and take a quick look at this mid fight because this is the next kind of key point i'm not really sure what's going on with shocks there he seems to basically just run towards that b execute and just assume that it's a four-man stack in tunnels he doesn't seem at all prepared for electronic to be lurking in mid I don't know what really to make of that. Let's just go and have a little look at it a little bit closer. Maybe we can get a better idea of what Shocks is kind of thinking here. But yeah, he just seems to be swinging out mids. And the way you see him look, he kind of looks... He's basically just not expecting to see anybody that far out of middle. Um, I'm not sure why he seems so convinced that it's going to be, for example, like a four-man B setup. Maybe... Misuta seeing so many people in tunnels gave Shocks the wrong impression. But it just kind of seems like Shocks goes sprinting out of CT there with just no idea that Electronic might be there. Now, with Shocks going down like that, we'll just go back to the overview. 
this is now that one kill on shocks has turned this round from very much favored towards vitality even though they only had one on b site apex only needs to get a one and done if shocks doesn't die for free in middle here then it's very much still a vitality favored round with shocks going down this round is almost impossible for vitality zemo and kyojin are absolutely miles away even if apex gets one coming out of tunnels this round is already pretty much done for vitality and as you can see they actually do apex gets one apex goes down vitality do actually call the round so they have a little look they come through middle here to have a little see if they can pick something up once they don't get a kill they have kits they only have mp9s they have no grenades to get into b here so this is going to be a very very difficult retake so they actually just immediately call it quits here vitality they almost immediately call the save um, I like that from Vitality to just call the save. There were two rifles for them to recover. There's one towards the top of middle, which they're going to recover now on Kyojin. That's a Galil. And Ziru recovers the M4 in CT that was belonging to Shox. So I like that call from Vitality to just get out of dodge and save there. There's nothing that they're going to get done on this B retake. All they're going to do is go down with all of the equipment they've got. They've got full armor. Uh, and Ke they've got kevlar and helmet they have a kit they have two rifles there's no need to chuck all of that cash away for no reason on a very very low percentage retake so basically just to quickly summarize them uh the first thing to note was that really nice short take as you can see here from shocks really really nice coordination between shocks and zero really really nice coordination between vitality in general deciding to leave that hole towards the b side of the map move masuta over to do the boost zero and shocks get there nice and quick boomich i don't think he's quite ready for the timing even if he was zero throws the perfect flash and then on shocks retreat not only is apex looking through middle but zero also molotovs lower so that shocks can retreat through short effectively now, obviously, the next bit of play that I liked was this simplification from Na'Vi. They say, right, let's not do anything silly. Let's just simplify the round down and group up, concentrate our firepower so that the man disadvantage is felt less on the site take, smoke off middle to prevent Vitality having any information upon which to rotate, and they just group up and get ready to hit this B site. Now, the next important thing is obviously Masuta towards Tunnel here, dying for free. I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to get in Na'Vi's face whilst they're in the middle of executing. So before they can get comfortable, throw their nades, get their spacing right, he's trying to get in their face. But considering Apex had utility to throw for him and they're in a 5v4, he doesn't need to make a big play. I think this is probably a mistake from Masuta. And he goes down without anything to show for it. Obviously, the next important fight is this one in middle between Electronic and Shocks. And at that point, the round is pretty much over. Apex would need to get one, maybe two on the site take at the very least. And then Ziwoo and Kyojin would probably have to find a lurker very quickly after the bomb goes down. Otherwise, they're not going to take that risk. And as you can see, they don't. Apex is going to go down. He's going to take one with him, but he is going to go down. And then Ziwoo and Kyojin, they're going to flash through middle just there they look for a kill they don't find it and they quickly decide to save which is a call i like i think it's very smart economically from vitality and the right call to make i hope you enjoyed that bite-sized breakdown guys if you did you know the drill and if you did not go and watch something else